I talk about uh, entitlements. You know, uh, uh, there is a real crisis right now regarding U.S. debt and the ability of the U.S. government to pay back the debt. Uh, uh, the, the Congress literally has to raise the debt limits so that the government can issue more debt so it can pay back the previous debt. Not only pay expenses, pay entitlements, pay uh, for all the things the government uh, pays for, but also to be able to pay, uh, to pay back uh, the debt that expires and to pay interest on the debt. And without issuance of new debt, it is almost impossible with some exceptions of some gimmickry that the Treasury might be able to do. But it's impossible, really, uh, to pay off uh, the U.S. debt, and, and you might see the U.S. government actually default on its debt. That is, not pay its creditors. Never happened in U.S. history. One indication that this is a real threat, that the market, at least, uh, markets really believe that this is a, a, a real threat, um, is that the cost of insuring America's debt against default has skyrocketed. Now, you can, using credit default swaps, um, buy, in a sense, insurance that if that pays you if the U.S. defaults on the debt. Now, usually, these credit default swaps are super cheap because the probability that the U.S. government will actually default on debt is assumed to be close to zero. But right now, the, the, the price to buy this insurance, to buy these CD, uh, to buy these uh, credit default swaps, CDSs, uh, uh, on U.S. Treasury bonds is actually higher than to buy insurance against Greek bonds, Mexican bonds, Brazilian bonds. In other words, the U.S. is more likely to default on its debt, not because the U.S. doesn't have the money to do it, not because the U.S. can't issue debt, but because of, of kind of the, the political stalemate that we're in, the kind of political jockeying uh, of our system, uh, the, the, the probability of the U.S. defaulting on its debt is higher right now than Greece, Mexico, or Brazil. And, um, you know, this is truly unbelievable. Now, I think Kevin McCarthy is using this as Republicans used it in 20, I think, 11 or 12 to try to get a Democratic president to agree to spending cuts. Obama ultimately agreed to that. And uh, uh, in, in the, the last six years of the Obama administration, from 2012 until 20, from 2010, really, so this was in 2011, from 2011 to 2017, actually saw, as a percentage of GDP, U.S. spending stabilize and, and actually go down after the, the spike of the stimulus package post-financial crisis. Kevin McCarthy is trying to do the same thing now with uh, Biden. Biden is resisting. They're playing chicken to see who will give. I, you know, it's hard to tell. I think ultimately they will cut a deal. I think Biden ultimately will agree to, to spending cuts, just like Obama did. Uh, but we will see. I, I mean, some of the economists advising Biden a far more committed to big government spending than I think economists were during the Obama era. Uh, and, and Biden's uh, agenda is kind of linked to a lot of spending. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but it is interesting. I don't think I'd ever, I, I ever thought I'd see U.S. credit default swaps selling at a higher price in Greece, Mexico, and Brazil. You know, a world, and, and by the way, again, uh, Trump is not helping here because Trump is saying entitlements off the table. Kevin McCarthy can't cut entitlements. So what does Kevin McCarthy have to cut? A lot. Because he, he can't cut defense and he can't cut entitlements, so he has to cut a lot of everything else. Um, and, and, and that is a tricky political position. Once you actually look at the details of what's being cut, for the Republicans... And it's tricky to get a deal with uh, with Biden, but you know I view this as theater more than anything else, and it's it's interesting to watch and interesting to see how uh, convoluted all this becomes and how they entangle themselves in this. Um, I, I I don't think at the end uh, a, a huge amount of damage is done to the U.S. economy one way or the other. However, this uh, this is settled. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, 
we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.